To practice intermittent fasting, you need to split your day into two parts, your eating window and your fasting window. But does it matter when you start your fasting window? I'll provide some insights on that question in this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Becky from drbeckyfitness.com. I'm a college instructor of the science of nutrition. The most convenient time for most people to fast is between dinner and lunch the next day. But what if your schedule doesn't allow that because you are a shift worker or you just like to eat at night so you're wondering if you can have a bedtime snack and then self-correct by extending your fast longer into the next afternoon. I would say that the authority to go to for this answer is Sachin Panda who is a pioneer in time restricted eating and our circadian rhythm which is that internal clock that guides our rest and active periods and naturally encourages us to eat and sleep and be active at different times of the day. And what we learned from Dr. Panda's work is that simply restricting the number of hours uh, you eat in a day will reduce your calorie intake and increase your weight loss. This study took place over 16 weeks and it shows that when overweight individuals changed their eating window from greater than 14 hours down to 10 to 12 hours a day, they experienced a reduction in body weight, reported being more energetic, and had better sleep quality. Um, and a particularly interesting part of this study was that participants weren't asked to change the quality or quantity of what they ate. So the only thing they changed was the length of their eating window. Uh, one possible reason for these positive results is because the shorter eating window did not allow for late night snacking, which is a time when a lot of mindless calories can be consumed. So eating right before bed and then pushing your fast into the next afternoon might not be as beneficial for weight control and another strike against late night eating has to do with hormone production in your body which follows a natural rhythm. Um, for instance, melatonin, which is a hormone that plays a really important part in our sleep patterns, goes up in the evening hours and signals your, your pancreas to slow down insulin production. So if you eat a big meal late at night, your blood glucose level might remain elevated through the night because there's not enough insulin to remove it. Now, if you follow my 0123 strategy, you know that the three stands for three hours before bed, stop eating, which is a gentle but uh, effective way to stop late night snacking. Um, if you haven't learned that strategy yet, you can do so for free through the links here on this video. Another benefit of starting your fast after dinner, you know, three hours before bed, is that it promotes a healthy circadian clock, which is important for healthy weight loss. This study by Dr. Panda demonstrates how eating and sleeping patterns promote or disrupt your circadian rhythm. And he provides a nice graphic that illustrates how the effects of a disrupted clock make weight loss challenging. For instance, we see from this graphic that a disrupted clock contributes to insulin resistance, poor sleep quality, and other metabolic problems like fatty liver that can stand in the way of your body's ability to burn fat. And we also see from the graphic that shift work disrupts a healthy clock. And there's no doubt that shift work is not ideal metabolically, but Dr. Panda does mention in an interview conducted by Dr. Rhonda Patrick that from animal studies, we see that even when day and night routines are reversed, the animals in this study gained some benefit from restricting their eating window. So if you are a shift worker, you are better off to reduce your eating window um, during the hours that you are awake. And just to touch on one more thought about how eating late at night disrupts your healthy circadian rhythm. I will reference the same video where Dr. Panda states that when you eat late at night, blood flow is directed toward your stomach. So your core temperature rises, making it harder to fall into that deep sleep needed for quality rest. So I'll leave you with some good news, and that is that by having a clear time in the evening to start your fasting window and then allowing a few hours in the morning before taking in food, you can promote a more robust circadian rhythm that allows you to get a good night's sleep and wake well-rested, feeling 
lighter and full of energy. And I think that is the experience that many people enjoy when they start their intermittent fast at least three hours before bedtime. Okay, well, as always, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you want to learn my free 0123 strategy, you can do through, so through the links provided. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I will be back here next week with another video to help you reach your goal. Thanks.